Welcome back to the swamp, my friends. Today, we are once again going to be searching for some creepy and unknown cryptid creatures. These subscribers sent in what they claim to be their experience with these alleged creatures. If you have a story that you would like to share in a future video, whether it be an encounter with a cryptid or something different, be sure to submit it at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. I'd love to share your story with everyone here in the swamp. It's stories like yours that help keep this channel going. Now, we read stories about all kinds of cryptids out there, and these ones will surely be no different and will definitely be diverse and creepy. But my question before we get into these stories, what is your favorite cryptid? Which one do you want to hear more about? Please let me know in the comments down below. Be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and get ready for some creepy stories. I live in a small house near some woods where strange noises are pretty standard. One day I was all alone with my girlfriend. We were watching some movies when we heard something strange coming from the woods. We quickly paused the movie to listen to the sound outside. I initially didn't think much of it at first. We live in the woods and like I said before, strange noises are pretty common here. That was until the noise continued getting louder. I told my girlfriend to wait while I go look through the kitchen window. Unfortunately, I couldn't see anything, so I grabbed a flashlight and went outside. I know, that is always the wise choice, right? Stepping out, I hear a soft whisper calling for help. I call out, and as I do, I hear the same voice again. Curious, I continued following the sound of the voice until I saw someone laying halfway out of a tree. I stepped closer, and when I finally arrived to the source of the sound, I almost threw up. There was this... I, I don't even know how to describe it. This, this creature of sorts, it, it almost looked like it was a half-man, half-deer. Terrified and disgusted, I looked frantically around when I see glowing eyes peering out from a tree. Freaking out, I think, is there another one there? I point the light at it, but as I do this, I hear an ear-piercing growl. Honestly, at this point, I was frozen in my steps until I snapped out of it and ran towards the house. As I busted through the door, my girlfriend looked worried. I told her to turn off all the lights and to lock all the doors. After we did, I looked out the window one last time and saw a creature I've never seen before, standing and staring at me with those same glowing eyes I saw in the woods. My heart racing, I waited for my girlfriend, praying nothing ever came of this. I didn't want my girlfriend and I to turn up dead or in any way like what I have seen in other stories. Thankfully, after much hiding and praying, the strange creature eventually went back into the woods. To this day, I don't know what it was, but I've never seen it again, and I sure to hell hope I never see it again. So this isn't a long story, but this is exactly what happened from my recollection. So, me and my friends John, Steven, and Kilby went to play Airsoft. Since we are lazy, we decided to play it at my friend Steven's house. Behind his house, he has a huge forest. We always played Airsoft in his backyard. The area we play Airsoft in is near a big line of power lines. It has two sets of woods on either side of it and a hill on the edge. The area is also boxed in by cow fences. The area right under the power lines was perfectly flat with no grass. We started at about 4 o'clock-ish. We played about 3 or 4 battles until it started to get dark. Since we aren't easily scared, we continued to play for about 30 minutes until it was pitch black. I was deep in the woods and my friends were on the hill shooting at me and my friend Steven for about 10 minutes till my friend Steven finally got hit. So it was just me, Kilby, and John. I got very close to the ground so they couldn't see me. Then I got that weird feeling in my stomach. 
You know the feeling when you feel like you're being watched? At first, I ignored it. That's when the feeling got stronger. I stood up and turned around. I saw what looked like a 10-foot tree man. It had like a leaf-like face and two bright blue eyes. So at first, I, I thought, meh, it's just like a tree with holes in it or something. But then I realized it was dark out. So I turned back around and it was closer this time. It stepped forward and it had a huge smile. I then realized that it started looking at me. That's when its mouth opened. It was just horrible. I wish I could say I charged it, but I screamed like a girl and ran. I was screaming and trying to alert my friends. My friend Kilby is a very paranoid guy, so he provided covering fire and was yelling to me to run faster. We all ran and just continued running. I have never run so fast in my entire life, even until this day. My friend John turned around and unloaded his gun and screamed. We finally made it to Stephen's house. We booked it into his house and locked the door. As we were in the house, we started hearing tapping and banging on the windows and doors. We shut off the lights and barricaded the doors. We played in the dark for about 45 more minutes. The noise stopped. We waited for another hour. A painstaking, horrifyingly long hour. I swore it felt like I had been up there for days. Then, we heard a knock at the door. We stayed quiet. Then my phone rang. It was my dad. I picked up and he said, Son, will you please come open the door? I went upstairs and opened the door. Sure enough, it was my father. I pulled him inside and closed the door. He looked at me and said it's time to go, so I grabbed my things and ran out the door and hopped into the car. My friends and I kept in contact the entire time, but nothing seemed to happen after this. My phone died and when I got home, I charged it to make sure no messages were there. I only had one, and it was one of my friends saying, stop messing with me. But of course, I wasn't there messing with them. I called him and he sounded pretty calm. He said it was probably just somebody messing with them and they just wanted to forget about it. But honestly, in the back of all of our minds, I think we know what it was. I know this seems silly, but it has had me terrified for many years. After hearing some of the stories on your channel, I got the courage to finally tell mine. I've never opened up about this and I've never told anyone. This happened a couple of years ago in mid-October in northern New Mexico. My brother and I went up to our ranch to do some coyote hunting, as we had just lost some calves to them. On the way we picked up some fresh roe kill to help get the attention of the coyotes. We throw this dead rabbit in the middle of the field and we sat in a high formation of rocks overlooking the property. We were sitting about arm's length away from each other but facing different directions. I was watching the north side, glancing through my scope to watch the tree line. My brother was watching the south end, and after about an hour of waiting, he tells me, Look, something just spooked the cows. They're all running away. I turned to face the same direction and we both got prepared to shoot if it was a coyote. Once the cows cleared the area, the only thing to walk out of the tree line was this deer. This wasn't just any deer though, it was a monster of a buck. The body and antlers on this thing were huge, it looked like a small elk. Other than the size, there was nothing abnormal about this deer. I have to guess we watched it for a few minutes grazing at least 250 yards away. I whispered to my brother to take a picture of this buck so we can show our friends since we had a deer hunt coming up in the next few weeks and this buck would make an amazing trophy. This is where it gets crazy. It was like the deer heard me whisper. He looked straight at both of us, holding the stare for a few seconds, and then it began to grow. While its body was changing and contorting, it let out this gut-wrenching roar that made my ears hurt. It felt like my heart had stopped. All of a sudden, this deer was now standing on its hind legs. I stayed in more shock when the deer started to yell. At first it sounded like gibberish, just making weird sounds. 
but eventually it started to almost sound like words. It was never distinguishable though. It ran to the dead rabbit and grabbed it while it cleared the whole property in just a mere second. There are several hundred acres of land, but that thing was out of sight in the blink of an eye. My brother and I sat there trying to figure out if we were going crazy and if we were just seeing things. We decide not to talk about it with anyone in fear of being laughed at or being accused of drinking or being on drugs, which honestly we both don't do any of those things. Now, fast forward to our hunting trip. It was my brother, two friends, and myself. We took a camper to the ranch, and the first night, one of our friends kept seeing red eyes in one of the camper windows and said he could hear breathing next to the window while he was laying down. My brother and I pretended like it didn't happen and told our friend he was just excited for the hunt tomorrow, but we both had a freaked out look on our face and we were constantly checking out the window. Once the morning came, we split up in groups of two. My brother and a friend decided to take the public land a few miles away from the ranch while our other friend and myself would circle the property. We returned to the camper with no luck, at around lunchtime. While we were cooking, I noticed my brother seemed a little nervous and was acting funny, and our friends just thought he was sick. Before we started eating, my brother asked if he could speak to me alone for a minute. We walk away and he started to tell me what happened after we split up. As the two drove away from the camper, our friend got out of the truck to open the gate. He told me that as he was waiting, he just happened to turn his head and saw antlers behind some bushes. That's when the thing stood up and my brother realized that it was the creature. Again, it was standing on its hind legs and that it had smiled with fangs showing. He continued by saying that it didn't walk or talk during this encounter, but he could somehow hear its thoughts. He claimed the creature was able to communicate telepathically, and he was told that our land is cursed and that our lives are in danger if we are not careful because he would be hunting us and will kill us at the first opportunity it gets. Just by hearing my brother talk, you could hear the concern in his voice and it really shook him up. We both decided to leave that night. We just told our friends we got called in to work and we had to show up due to an emergency. We would have to use any excuse. We would have used any excuse to leave. It's been around three years since this happened. We haven't seen the creature, but we know it's still around. We have lost multiple cattle throughout the years and have been noticing that they have died in some really strange ways, like full-grown bulls hanging from trees or entire carcasses left but without a drop of blood. We obviously still go to the ranch, but we are all well-armed. Although, I have a feeling a bullet wouldn't kill this creature anyway. We just don't feel comfortable in the mountains anymore. I know it sounds crazy, but there really is strange things out there. This is my first time writing this story down, though I have many more I could tell you. This isn't my story, but a story told to all the kids on my hauler to scare us into not going off on our own, especially on Halloween night. So. Some details if you don't know what a hauler is. It's the valley in between the mountains with lots of houses. You see, I live in West Virginia, where a lot of creepy things happen all the time. From ghosts to creature sightings to people just disappearing. In the 60s, there was a massive flood that killed a lot of people, so you can imagine the ghost activity around here. Anyway, the hauler is long, with one bridge in or out, and yes, our roads are paid, but the road turns to a four-wheeler trail pretty quickly. Now, when this happened, which was in the 50s at the end of the hauler, they had what everyone called a community gate, which was basically a fenced-in area that went halfway up the hauler, and people brought their horses, cows, and pigs, etc. In the morning, they would bring them, and at night, they would have to take them home and there was always someone watching them. But these two coal miners had to work late one night, so everyone took their animals home but the two men's cows. It was two cows and a calf. My dad would always get serious at this part and lean in closer to us kids and say it was pitch black because there were no lights, but the light of the coal lanterns they carry. When the men went to retrieve their animals, they were gone. They figured the cows wandered off, so they got their buddy and his horse, and they started riding up around the hauler to try to find them. They made their way up, and soon they ran into the first cow, 
who was torn to pieces. Being experienced hunters like everyone around here, they knew no animals around here could have done this. It looked more like the killing of a, some sort of satanic sacrificial sports or something. They were enraged, maybe even rabid. So they gripped their rifles tight and continued on to find the mama and her calf. They were almost to the end of the gate when the calf ran past them. They were still on their horses and one man jumped off and readied his rifle. They inched closer when their horses started to buck and threw one man off. The other got down and the horse went running off back to the front of the gate. One of the three lanterns was their only light due to the horses freaking out. And the man was thrown from the horse, he lost his gun. Scared to death, they were ready to go back. And that's when they heard a low, deep growl. It sounded like a panther, but they were rarely spotted this far down the mountains. They quickly turned to see red, glowing eyes staring at them with the body of a cow underneath it. The creature was hunched over, but you could easily tell that it was a large black mass. This was something neither of them had ever seen. It wasn't a bear or even a Bigfoot. It looked demonic. It just stared at them, seemingly forever. They were too frightened to move. Then, this thing smiled at them. It was an ear-to-ear -ear type grin. It was almost like... I don't know if this makes sense, but if you've ever seen the smiling man's grin. One of the men finally snapped out of their shock and shot this creature. It made a god-awful blood-curdling scream which made the other man shoot his gun. The creature ran up the mountain. It took them a while before they walked back down to the gate. They picked up the calf and horses and then went home. For the longest time, the three wouldn't speak a word. They just said they saw something that will haunt them to their last day. Eventually, one of them finally told the story. I'm not sure if people actually believe it, but it kind of turned into a legend around here. The older folks tell the kids to make them believe. The demon holler will come and get them if they don't behave. I know, kind of brutal, right? Of course, as kids, we used to go up there and see how long the others would last till we got scared. We did it in our teens, and heck, we still do it as adults. We will tell the kids today the same story, and most likely they'll tell their kids. West Virginia is pretty known for being creepy. Seeing a hellhound usually means bad luck, right? What if it was protecting you, though? So, this happened seven years ago. Yet, I remember it like it was yesterday. I was a normal seven-year-old boy. My parents started moving and our first trip was to a two-story house in the forest. I kept feeling like something was following us as we drove, but I never saw anything. So, once we had gotten to the house, I ran inside. It was pretty much a normal day. That night, I heard growling when my parents went to sleep. I slept on the second floor. I saw a large black wolfish creature it was like the size of a polar bear. There was a white creature slightly larger than a wolf as well, and I think it might have been a wolf too, I'm not sure. There were many dogs and other mammals surrounding the house. The black wolf had its back to the house and it looked like it was in a defensive stance, like it was protecting us or something. So the white creature ran towards the black creature causing the mammals to move closer to the house. The two creatures wrestled for a while, barking and growling as they fought. The black one had won. As I was watching, the white creature ran away into the darkness followed by the army of mammals. The black creature turned around and stared right at me. It had glowing purple eyes. It nodded, turned around, and ran jumping over the trees, disappearing. I was scared and confused. The next morning I ran outside and saw ashes where the black wolf was standing and more tracks with ashes in them in the direction it was running. The footprints stopped in the place it jumped. Five years later I found out what a hellhound was, and there was one protecting me. So my life has been pretty normal ever since, except outside during the night seeing that same hellhound guard the place I stay. It always nodded and ran away once it noticed me. I'm 14 years old now, and that creature, I still think about it all the time. What do you guys think about my story though?
I would like to recount this story from my childhood, when I must have been around 13 years old on a New Year's night in the southern English countryside. I grew up surrounded by countryside and was no stranger to being out late at night, alone or with my dog. I felt comfortable being outside at all times. After all, the English countryside is supposedly predator free from the occasional, you know, fox or badger or a rutting deer. There was little to fear. I and my parents were visiting with my mother's parents who lived in a country house surrounded by fields near a farm. It's a beautiful place full of lush greenery in rolling hills and fields in every direction broken up by thick hedge groves and small areas of woodland. A couple of my aunts and uncles were at the house, also along with my cousins visiting from Wales. They were all busy inside chatting away after having a big dinner. My best friend at the time had come along with us and we had retreated back to the backyard to chat and do whatever young boys do when they're bored. It was pitch black across the fields and the back of the yard largely separated from the front by a thick hedge. Although to my side and behind where my friend was standing was a narrow pathway that led to the back sheds in the rest of the yard which was fenced off from the farmer's fields. Sometimes during the day, the farmer's dogs would run along the fence line barking and carrying on as farm dogs do. They were collies, a medium sized and commonly kept farm dog. Energetic and intelligent, they made good sheepdogs. I and my friend were talking about some usual nonsense, and I was standing by the old concrete coal bins, kicking lumps of coal back into the pile. The country was very quiet, but since I had been there many times, I had little interest in what was going on around me and was concentrating only on what I was doing and the conversation we were having. Although the country around us was totally dark, we stood in the light of the kitchen window, lost in our own little world. My friend suddenly stopped and asked, What was that? I listened for a second and after hearing a faint rumble, replied, Must be a car. I continued kicking the coal back into the bin, watching it roll back down and kicking it back again, and carrying on with the conversation. My friend carried on also for a moment but then stopped again and asked, Did you hear that? What the heck is that? I listened again half-heartedly, hearing a rumbling off in the distance, and replied impatiently, It's just a car, you idiot. I shook my head and went back to kicking lumps of coal. Then the noise came again, but this time closer and louder, and I stopped. And my body went stiff. It was a deep, guttural growl. Much too deep and loud to be any kind of dog, especially not one of the farmer's collies, which I had heard growl a few times before and mostly had a yapping type bark. The growl came again, loud and threatening, and my friend and I looked at each other with that wide-eyed look of fear you might see in a horror movie right before someone's head went rolling to the ground. That's when I looked behind my friend into the deep darkness between the hedge and the side of the house where the path was leading into the fenced off backyard, I saw two huge glowing eyes. They were much lower than a man but much higher than a dog could have been and set too far apart to be a dog either. The pupil was slit like a cat and the irises were shimmering bright red. I do not recall seeing any other detail in that pitch blackness. I saw no nose, no whiskers, no part of the body just those two huge red eyes hanging in the darkness. Without further hesitation, I ran inside, followed instantly by my friend, bumping into the back and struggling not to be left behind, for fear of what monster could be snatching us away. We burst through the door of the old country house and ran through the kitchen into the next room, slamming the doors behind us. We were terrified and out of breath, but I remember laughing and asking my friend, what the hell was that? Feeling bold in the comfort of the lighted house, we took to looking out the windows, but could not see anything. Whatever was out there had slunk back off into the darkness of the countryside. Due to the shape and color of the eyes and the deep guttural growl, we concluded it must have been some sort of big cat. It coincided 
with a recent story we had heard from kids at school who had recently been in the local newspaper with a similar story of seeing a big cat. These kinds of urban legends tend to go around in the quaint countryside of England, but you don't expect them to actually be true. In fact, I remember mocking the story thinking they must have made the whole thing up. What bothers me to this day is the fact that it was not the pupil of those eyes that shone as you have undoubtedly seen cats do. What bothers me to this day is the fact that it was not the pupil of those eyes that shone as you have undoubtedly seen cats do with that bright greenish hue as light shines across them, but it was the irises that shone in a deep blood red color. As far as I know, there are no big cats with slitted pupils, even though at night it might change, they will still shine green. And they are round like a human. I tend to think this was some huge cat we had witnessed in the darkness that night, but those blood, red slitted eyes still haunt my imagination and I do not take going out into the woods at night for granted any longer. My family owns a lake house in North Georgia. We've had it as long as I've been alive, about 28 years now. It's off a secluded road in a small cove and the neighbors only visit during the summer and spring seasons. Our lake house has been robbed before, as have our neighbors and we didn't even know about it until weeks later. To put perspective into just how secluded this part of the lake is, for as long as I can remember, I've always had the most vivid nightmares and experiences at that lake house, most of them including having a cryptid of some sort. I didn't know if these dreams had some real weight to them or not until a few years ago. I used to go up there before I moved out of my parents' house to blow off steam and spend some time alone and occasionally smoke. I always went in the off-season during fall or winter for that extra effect of complete seclusion. The lake house itself is two stories and down a large hill. The tin roof is a steep A-frame and impossible to climb, save for a small partition over the master bedroom itself. You can only access that by a ladder on the left side of the house to clean the gutters. The front of the house has two large floors to ceiling windows facing the lake and leads out to a two-story deck over the water. If it wasn't for the seclusion, there would be little privacy due to these open windows. Not to mention at this time that there was no internet here and a cell phone signal was very limited unless you climbed to the top of the quarter mile long driveway. I believe this was about four years ago. I went up to the lake sometime in late September to work on writing my novel and to spend some time alone. It was a normal day, gloomy, misty, and the water in the cove was all still as glass. At night, I could hear the remaining crickets and tree frogs of the season chirping in the night, just the way I loved it there. It was about 2 a.m. when I decided to go to sleep in the master bedroom. I'm a sound sleeper, but a loud bang on the tin roof above my head tore me out of my dream state, heart racing. It was like a gunshot on the tin above me but I had heard that sound before, especially in storms. I assumed it was a large acorn striking the roof and calmed my nerves in order to fall back asleep. Then I heard the tin bend and wobble as if something large had stomped upon it, or landed for that matter. It was still for at least five minutes, long enough for me to attempt to rationalize what it could have been. I then noticed the chirping outside had stopped, the metal warped again over my head. Something very large was moving across the roof. I could hear each dent in the tin. Another sound I can't quite describe mixing with the sound of the tin. If I didn't know any better, it sounded like hooves? I had never seen a deer at the lake house despite its seclusion. And for a hooved animal to reach that area of the roof would have been impossible since it was eight feet off the ground. I laid absolutely still in bed, hardly breathing as I struggled to rationalize and swallow my fear. I always had a huge interest in the unknown and have experienced many strange happenings, some of the others which I will share in the future, but I always faced them and with interest and confidence, never an ounce of fear. I consider myself to have good survival instincts, and in this time, my instincts were shouting danger to me. 
The metallic sound of the tin roof being compressed from a large weight continued as it approached over my head. And then, I heard scraping. It was like nails on a chalkboard. I regained the ability to move as my instincts told me to get out of there, and I moved in a slow motion as I slid out of bed and stepped on the floor, careful to not step on the creaking old floorboards and alert whatever was out there. I got on my hands and knees to crawl out of the bedroom into the main foyer, passing by the fireplace to do so. The sound was almost amplified as I crossed the open fireplace and chimney, and I think I heard growling. It was very low, and didn't exactly sound threatening, more so like a purr of some sort or a trill, but it was like nothing I had ever heard before. I crawled between the sofa and the coffee table, attempting my best to avoid the large windows. The metal warped again, a loud sound as the metal popped into place as if the animal had jumped off. From the couch, I could see from the open kitchen and the clock over the stove that it was nearing 4 a.m. I waited until 20 minutes had passed and I didn't hear anything else. At that point, I had time to use my rational thought and remember the times we had been robbed, as had our neighbors. Knowing no animal could have reached the roof, I assumed it had to be a home invader that had climbed the ladder. I remember my dad kept a BB gun in the tool closet on the other side of the lake house. My fear had left me and all I was left with was adrenaline and a rage and instinct to protect my home. I got it from my hiding place and located the 20 year old BB gun. The gun itself was rusted beyond belief and I couldn't even load the damn thing, but it looked real and that was all that mattered at this time. I gathered my courage and unlocked the door to the patio deck and slowly creaked open the secondary storm door. Stepping out into the clear night, it was too quiet for my liking, but at least whatever it was seemed to be gone. I tiptoed barefoot to each side of the patio deck, peering over to my neighbor's dark homes and up the driveway. I used my foam flashlight to check my car in the driveway. No slashed tires or broken windows, thankfully. I turned off the flashlight and allowed my vision to adjust to the darkness before I gathered enough courage to raise the BB gun and slowly make my way down the dry rotted patio stairs to the left wing of the house. The roofing above the master bedroom was empty, the ladder was still in place, and nothing was there. I was relieved and decided I needed to call it a night. The anxiety of the previous event wore me out. I walked back up the steps and went to re-enter the home when chills crept up my bare arms and hair was standing on end. A feeling paralyzing me in place as I suddenly felt like I was being watched. I held my breath. Inches away from the door, the large A-frame of the house towering above me, and I felt I needed to look up. I wish I didn't. As I backed up to get a better view of the steep A-frame, a black figure came into view, perched on top of the steep roof. A black, triangular head was attached to a large body, much bigger than any man I had ever seen. The purring or trilling noise returned and my heart thumped wildly in my chest as my horrified gaze met a pair of glowing, yellow eyes. I whipped open the storm door and pushed my way into the house. I slammed the door, bolted the lock and ran into the guest bedroom on the other side of the house. The only one not having any windows. I shut the door and crawled into the lower bed of one of the bunk beds in the corner, clutching my phone and the BB gun to my chest. I don't even know how or when I managed to fall asleep. I woke up at 9am, my neck aching and stiff from my awkward sleeping position of being huddled in the corner against the bunk bed post. I hardly remember why I had the BB gun, but when I did the familiar chills and adrenaline struck me. I found a more comfortable position in the bed and laid for at least an hour, wide eyed, wondering if there was still anything out there. I finally had enough balls to leave the bedroom. My walk through the hallway required me to approach the large windows. It was a sunny morning and I could faintly hear birds chirping to my relief. 
I didn't need to go outside again to confirm that whatever it was had gone. I made myself breakfast and turned on the TV to watch a comedy movie on the VHS to calm myself even further. It was time to pack up and go back home, and I considered telling my parents about what had transpired last night. Knowing the previous times I had told them about the lake monster I believe resided in our cove and the experience I thought I had with ghosts never went over well, so I decided to keep this story to myself until now. This really happened, and it still gives me chills to think about. Before I left, I cleaned the house and loaded my car. I locked up the house and passed by the ladder on the slanted tin roof. I cleared the leaves from the rungs and climbed up the eight foot and climbed on. The tin hardly caved under my feet. I weighed about 150 pounds at this time. As I examined the roof, there were no dents and no scratches. I was about to leave when I saw it. My heart clenched in a vice as I laid my eyes upon a large, muddy print on the edge of the side gutter, each the size of a breastplate, oblong, rounded, and each split down the middle in a pair of cloven hoofs. I had told the story about encountering a possible cryptid on a 130 acre ranch while out hunting. Personally, I cannot say I know exactly what kind though, Skimwalker, Wendigo, maybe something else. I do know exactly what happened when I went hunting for it a year later though. Before I start, I would just like to warn those who think it's a good idea to go looking for these things. It is absolutely not. A year after my first encounter. Almost to the day, I returned to my friend's 130 acre ranch. We will call my friend D, as in the last post. Since my first encounter with the towering humanoid figure, I was determined to find out what it was. I am the type of person that if something scares me, I tend to confront it so I will no longer be scared or just to prove to myself that I'm not a chicken. This was one of those moments. I arrived at the ranch around mid-afternoon, my bags full of ammo and my trusty 30 6 and a 45 in hand. I told D about my plan to go hunting for this so-called Wendigo or whatever and asked if he would like to go. Being his land, he was curious to see if there really was anything unusual happening on it. He believed I had seen something as we were good friends and he had never seen me so shook up as I was after my first encounter so we agreed to come along. We waited until about 3 a.m. to head out. Almost immediately the spook factor was greatly increased as an extremely thick fog rolled in. Also, it was a supermoon, so between the fog and the supermoon, it was a perfect setting for a horror movie. We left the house which sits at the front of the land and made our way through the various pastures and trees looking for the main road that goes all the way from the front of the land to the back past the thick forest to the left of the road. Keep in mind we had no flashlights. I know, stupid. I had previously seen this thing on my way to the woods, so we headed that way. It was extremely difficult to see the fog as it was so thick, you could barely see anything right in front of you, just silhouettes of cows and tree-like shadows passing by us as we walked. Suddenly I hear, Help me! I turn and can barely make out D laying on the ground writhing in pain. I knelt down to ask what happened. He said, I stepped in a cow track and twisted my ankle. I can't go any further. Being the awesome friend I am, I helped carry him all the way back to the house. Being incredibly brave, or stupid, I traded him my 30 6 for his 12 gauge loaded with buckshot and headed back out, alone, no flashlight. I got back to where I thought we were before and continued on. I moved slowly because it was hard to see and I did not want to end up like D. Shotgun loaded and ready to rock, I crept through the fog, taking a step and pausing, listening before I take another. Suddenly I hear the sound of cows moving as a herd. They were moving away from me, fast as though something spooked them. I assumed it was just me that spooked them and I kept moving. Then I noticed the sound of the cows had faded fast and it was now dead silent. 
No crickets, frogs, owls, or any known creatures of the night. The quiet was almost deafening. Then I heard a voice. Help me. I won't lie. I just about soiled myself. I heard it again and realized it was D. How did he get back out here? He couldn't walk as his ankle had swollen up three times its size and he didn't take the truck. I would have heard it or seen the headlights. I spun slowly in a 360 degree circle, scanning the milky darkness. Help me. It came again, this time closer and followed by the smell of what I could only describe as rotting flesh. I noticed there was something off about Dee's voice though. It sounded synthetic, like someone was trying to mimic his voice through a speaker, but couldn't get the tone right. It sounded more like a question than a demand. At this point, I was absolutely certain that whatever was lurking just outside my range of vision was not D. I pointed the shotgun in the direction I thought the last cry came from and pulled the trigger. The gun kicked and the sound echoed across the pasture, slowly dying out. I waited for a moment, nothing but quiet. Then I felt it, a rumbling that started in my feet, vibrating up my legs. Something heavy was running and impacting the ground hard. My first thought was, great, I'm going to get stampeded by some cows. But this was no cow. From behind, I was hit hard, knocking me off my feet. I landed on my stomach, but instantly rose again, just in time to see a black, dark figure disappearing into the fog. There was a pause, and then the rumble began again. This time, I could clearly hear what direction the sound was coming from. As it got closer, it braced for possible impact. I was expecting a mad cow or a big hog, but to my shock and dismay, that is not what I saw. This thing moved unbelievably fast, but I was able to make out a silhouette. It had to easily be eight feet plus, ran on two legs, and had almost a skeletal body. It hit again, knocking me back about three feet onto my butt. I rolled onto my stomach and pointed the gun and fired. I must have hit this thing because it made a sound that caused me to drop my gun and cover my ears. It was that loud. The sound was like that of a squealing pig, a screaming woman, and nails on a chalkboard all coming from this thing at the same exact time. Without delay, I stood up and started to run. Ankles be damned, I made it back to the house. By then, Dee had already gone to bed and the house was quiet. I sat there until the sun came up in total shock. Did I survive a possible Wendigo attack or something else? My grandfather told me a story about he saw one of these cryptids face to face once. I never had heard such of a thing until long after he died. I was drinking with some friends and we were swapping creepy stories. My friend, whose native then told me it was actually a legend amongst the tribes that she grew up around. My grandfather isn't native, we're Hispanic but not of any direct native descent, and to my knowledge he didn't have any native friends. So thinking back on the story he told me, I now think he was being truthful. This is what I remember. My grandfather used to be a grunt out in the oil fields, which means he basically does maintenance on the rigs and odd jobs. Well, his shift was overnight, and he said that it was already very lonely and eerie out there on a normal night. Out in the hills, in pitch darkness, the sounds of the rigs were super dissonant sounding. He said sometimes it sounded like babies crying, other times it sounded like someone was whispering his name. Just really creepy stuff. So one night he gets out of his truck and climbs up onto a rig. Like normal, when he stops because he's face to face with... this thing. He said it resembled a bird, but it was a humanoid creature. It stood super tall much taller than he was. Its whole body was covered in black feathers, and they were like square patterns. Its face was long and pointed, but it wasn't exactly a beak. Like, it was just part of its face. It was not hard, like that of a beak of a bird. 
Its eyes were bright red with massive pupils, and it just stood there staring at him. He said he was frozen, and so was it. They both just stood there, staring at each other. He said it felt like the thing was just as surprised by his presence as he was of it. And as he, he was trying to, you know, just get out of that situation. He caught it off guard, and it was just standing there, rigid with its arms. He couldn't tell if they were arms or wings, pressed firmly against its sides. After a few minutes, Grandpa regained control of his legs again and started to walk back down the rig's ladder, as slowly as possible. The thing seemingly stayed put, didn't move a muscle, and didn't blink. He said as soon as he touched the ground, he booked it back to his truck and got the heck out of there. This story always freaked me out. Like any other Latin grandpa, mine had countless stories about creatures and ghosts and stuff, but this one, I feel like this one was too weird to be made up. Years later, my friend basically confirmed that this thing is real. About five years ago when I was in high school, we started seeing a cat with no tail around my girlfriend's house. It was strange as I have read cats lose their balance without their tails. Regardless, this cat moved like any other cat I've ever seen, and he was always around. Around the same time, I started hearing weird noises in my backyard at night and having frequent nightmares. One night, I finally decided to take a look at what was making those weird sounds. And what could it be but the tailless cat? Mind you, I lived three miles away from my girlfriend, and even if a cat's terrain spread that wide, what are the odds he would wind up in my house? One day, at school, a buddy, whose father is a pastor, was telling us about all the weird happenings in his dad's temple, and I told him about the cat. To my surprise, he told me he had also seen this cat. He lived at least six miles away from my house. I didn't believe him until he perfectly mimicked the sound the cat made outside my house. Now, myself and this guy had no relation, and the only things we had in common is that we were Hispanic high school students. So, we have a cat who covers an area of at least 10 miles, can move perfectly without a tail, and apparently only appears to Hispanics. Sure, this was weird, but what I will never forget is the last time I saw this supposed cat. My girlfriend and I were heading to her house after wrestling practice. It was dark out since practice ran late, and we decided to cut through some clinics to save time. I jumped down a little ledge and landed right in front of the cat. This was the first time I saw it up close. And I kid you not, this cat had the face of an old man. Just a cat body and an old man face. I didn't know anything about cryptids back then. But regardless, I was terrified. I ran to my girlfriend, grabbed her hand, and just booked it. I swear as we ran away, I heard those noises behind me. Now, years later, that image burned in my head. I have tried to research, and I think I may have found what it was. I think it was a skimwalker, a nahul, or a shapeshifter. Skimwalker, mostly since apparently whatever animal they turn into, never have tails. I have also read that skinwalkers hate cats, so I don't know. Any input would be appreciated. Lord knows I would love some closure. And thank you, Swamp, for sharing my story on your show. Alright, so when I was little, I used to live in the Philippines, and there are so many stories about the Aswang and Capri there. Most of my family has encountered them, making them believers. But I have never encountered such a foul creature. But one day, we had to stay at my auntie's house, because that's where we would stay whenever we go to Marikina, a place near Manila in the Philippines. Some of my family members that were there with us mentioned that the house had not been blessed and that it was likely haunted. One night, my mom woke up suddenly she got up and left the room to use the bathroom. As she was walking down the stairs to the bathroom, she claims to have seen what looked like a random guy with a hat walk past her and go down the stairs and walk outside of the house. At first, she thought it was just my oldest brother just wanting some fresh air. So, she thought nothing much of it and proceeded to use the bathroom. 
After doing her business, she went to go and check on who she thought was my brother, only to discover the front of the house was empty. She went up to the other room and saw everyone asleep, and she got chills, but ultimately just went back to bed. The one I encountered, though, wasn't like any other story I've ever heard about. I was in the room with my mom, auntie, grandma, and uncle. My mom and I had a thing to sleep on the floor while my granny and aunt and uncle slept on the bed. I was sitting on the floor bed as I looked on the doorway. The door was opening, and I saw a hand slowly reach out and just slowly started reaching and stretching out toward me. I started crying and freaking out and pointed at it and started hiding under the blanket as everyone was clueless and didn't see anything. I then hid behind my mom as I look up to the bed. My uncle had his back turned against me and my mom, but from where he was facing, the wall, the same hand looks like it stretching and raising its hand from me and I scream, Ma, I see a hand. But she was oblivious to what I was seeing and didn't care. I went to sleep under my blanket while my family was just having a normal conversation in the room. It's not the scariest story, but this is my encounter with these creatures. And thank you for sharing if you end up doing it. I was camping, and there was something out there with us. I could hear it all over the area, like it was stalking us, but I didn't tell anyone because I didn't want them to panic. It never came close enough to bug us, but I could tell if we had passed into the woods any deeper, the creature was just there waiting for us. It's definitely not a wendigo or a skimwalker. It was something else, something more akin to the rake maybe, but it was so wrong. It was tall, thin, and white with piss yellow eyes and black stains of like <sighs> do you guys know Gollum from Lord of the Rings it had black strains of hair like that just absolutely sickly looking I only saw it once for a split second it was on the last day but it was all I needed to see because when I saw it I knew it had been following us for days on the edge of the woods we had been camping and this thing had to be some kind of demon or mythic creature that humans were never meant to deal with alone, as it wasn't natural. It somehow kept up with us the whole way. When I looked back, it was practically right on our bumper. I know there's no outrunning it, and if that's true, it stands to reason it's probably too strong for us to fight outright. I don't shy away from anything though. It does make me contemplate if I'd be nothing more than a momentary speed bump in its life if I had decided to attack it, or if it had decided to attack us. Stay safe out there, everyone. I know my story is short, and definitely not too detailed. I just wanted to cut off all the other story stuff because the only thing that matters was this encounter and sighting. I'll start by saying no, this isn't my story, but it was such a crazy encounter that I have since asked each of my friends through the years to recount the events. This happened around the year 2000. About a year after this took place, I started dating one of these friends, and that's when I first heard about this dog or wolf story. I have since asked each friend over the years and miles apart, and they all remember the same encounter. Before my ex was even my boyfriend, let's call him Jay, he and our other friends were about 17 to 18 years old. At that age, I remember it being an adventure to find a place to smoke. Let's hike and do this and puff. Ah, the good old days, when we got away from parents and had a day planned around just smoking. Simpler times. It was Jay and his best friend B and their girlfriends S and M. The four of them decided to drive to Mount Pisgah, a beautiful wooded area outside of Eugene, Oregon. It's more of a hill, but it's nature and it's prime for sure. I've been out there many times growing up, and I know exactly what trail they are on, the main one that connects the parking lot to the river. They had driven in B's little white sedan, parked in the parking lot, and then walked to the river. On the way to the river from the lot, 
There is a very small bridge that crosses a small creek. This will be relevant for later. The group spent the day out there, swimming and puffing, puffing and swimming, just being typical Oregon teens. I can imagine that hunger is what drove them to go home after a few hours. As the sun began to set, either activity alone is bound to get someone hungry, let alone both. So they walked along the well-worn main dirt path to the parking lot. This path has since been paved, according to Google Maps. It doesn't take but 20 minutes or so for them to get back to the little footbridge by the parking lot they had crossed when they had hiked in. When they reached this small footbridge near the parking lot, B looked out into the vast field between them and the wooded mountain, and noticed a huge dog near the tree line. It was roughly about 100 yards away. They all later described it as the biggest dog they had ever seen. The dog was just sitting there. Not looking scary, just looking like a humongous friendly dog. It was starting to get dark, but from M and J's descriptions, and the drawings he did for me later in 2005, it was very shaggy and furry. I may even still have the notebook where she drew the dog thing in it. If I find it, I'll share it. My friends continued to walk across this small wooden bridge, and one of the girls screamed. The big dog was now on its hind legs standing much closer. When they had seen it a couple of seconds earlier, it was on all fours, like I said, and much further away. It had traversed most of the large field in seconds. Whatever this thing was, it was fast, quiet, and incredibly stealthy. My four friends ran to the car, and they had the classic cliche, I can't get the key in moment, because B was fumbling madly for the keys. At this point, the dog was standing on its hind legs, at the very edge of the parking lot, looking at them. It still had the dog face, still had the dog body, but it was standing up. They never saw it walking on all fours, just two. It was like every time they looked up, it was just standing there, closer and closer. As Jay had said, every time they looked up, he was closer but not moving. All of them recounted how surreal it was to see a dog standing on its hind legs like that. They said this thing was super tall though. Like, they thought it was easily like six and a half to seven feet maybe. I don't know if it ran for a few ticks and then stood up again at intervals in the field, but that's the way they described it. Many times I asked them, are you sure it wasn't a bear? And they definitely know it wasn't a bear. They're for sure that it was a dog standing on its hind legs. A big dog that was stalking them. This all happened in Lane County, Oregon, in the year of 2000. There are a few bears, if any, out there, but it would be odd. But then again, I wasn't there. The kids got into the car and sped off, leaving the Pisgah dog to his own business. I've never had a reason to doubt any of their stories. In fact, S doesn't even like talking about the incident at all because it's too creepy for her to recall. This story takes place in the deserts of Arizona. Me and my dad are on a camping trip with the rest of our family, but thanks to the size of my family, we had to take two cars. One car was just for boys and one for girls. I had three sisters, but I was the only boy. Three hours later, and nightfall approaches, making it harder to drive with only one headlight working at the time, so my dad decides we should stop and camp there for the night. I said I was down as long as we sleep in the car. That's not really camping, but if you had to choose between a car seat and the ground, then I think you know what I was doing. Anyways, he agreed, so we drove off the road onto the sand with cactus as far as you could see. We both began our descent into slumber, only I couldn't as I was a bit of an insomniac, which I was fine with. It just meant I could look up at the night sky and enjoy it. Suddenly, I heard what sounded like a blood-curdling screech of some kind, coming from somewhere in the vast emptiness of the desert. At first, I thought it was a coyote, but coyote doesn't really sound like that. Frozen solid, I look out the window to see a tall, lanky creature standing on all fours. It's 
appendages were extremely long and unnatural looking. At first glance, it would have been just blending in with the cacti surrounding the area with a seemingly prickly skin. But I didn't just peek and look away. I was flat out staring at it until my eyes locked with its two small white dots. I believe these were its eyes. I am dropping bricks in my pants at this point. But those bricks turned to boulders as it full out charges at the small car, which could easily be flipped with little effort. I guess with all that commotion, my dad must have woken up, because before I knew it we were driving off of the sand back onto the road flooring it. Suddenly, the back window was smashed in with the creature slamming its two-fingered hand into the glass screen, sending shards everywhere. It didn't follow us for much longer, as it had glass shrapnel in its hand. It started to slow down and limp away leaving blood marks on the back door. We kept driving without looking back fearing to see it again. Eventually we had to stop as we caught up with the rest of the family. Once there we all shared the same expressions on our faces. It was a look of terror. That day is one I'll never forget. As it happened in Scotland, I was told it could not be a skimwalker. So when I found this show, I thought I'd share it here and see what you all think. Some things I'd like to note. While I don't live in a tiny village like this encounter happened in, I do live in a small town in Scotland, so I am familiar with many animal sounds. It was not an owl or a fox, both of which I'm very familiar with as I live near a lot of them. I hope you all enjoy reading my experience. So, a little over a year and a half ago, I went to stay with my grandmother in the countryside. She lives in a tiny village in the middle of nowhere in Scotland. My grandfather has recently passed after a long illness. I was worried she might be lonely, so I went to stay for a while. One night there, it was perhaps 1am. I couldn't sleep, so I was on my laptop in the guest bedroom that had formerly belonged to my grandfather. It had new furniture, etc. to make it a guest room, as his hospital bed and all that were taken back. As I'm on my laptop, I hear what sounds like a flock of chickens going by the window, going nuts and clucking. I think nothing of this and chuckle to myself thinking the neighbor's chickens had gotten out. I'm about to go check the window, thinking that there's something going on. Maybe if I just put some food out and try to herd them into the garden, maybe they'll, you know, leave me alone and stay in that one area and not get lost before I reach the window. However, the noise of chickens changes and begins to blend together into a noise that gets louder and louder until it doesn't sound like chickens anymore. It sounds like a screaming that has me frozen in place. It no longer sounded like multiple voices of animal. So, I knew it wasn't a flock of chickens being attacked by a fox or something. It was now a hellish screaming noise that was directly outside my window, which was thankfully covered by curtains. It stayed at my window for perhaps five, maybe even ten minutes while I'm frozen from fear in the middle of the room, before it left and I could hear the screaming get more and more distant until it was gone. I honestly have no idea what I heard and was too scared to talk to my grandmother about it the next day. Do any of you have any idea what this could be, or any thoughts on what happened? It was about a month ago that I learned of what these crawlers were. While listening to your podcast, describe encounters with these said creatures, I finally learned the name of what I feel best describes of what I saw in 2002 and 2003. Both of my encounters take place along the Texas border and Mexico. The first encounter, I was with a friend exploring irrigation canals at night. On the farmlands near my house. Honestly, I couldn't really give you a reason why. We were just bored. These canals are elevated about 20 feet or so, and the water is down at the bottom of the trench. While driving, the truck's headlights illuminated a small, lanky, gray and white creature on the side of the canal. As soon as the headlights hit the crawler, it leaped into the darkness of the canal. With similar ease as a cat might jump, 
Both my friend and I immediately shouted, What the heck is that? The Chupacabra is my area's local cryptid legend, so we immediately assumed that, until I heard of the existence of the crawler. I had been thinking a Chupacabra was what I saw, or some type of alien. But descriptions of the Chupacabra don't accurately describe this crawler. The many descriptions of the crawler are spot on with what I saw. The second encounter was at my house. Occasionally, I would climb up onto the second story of my family home for a bit of stargazing. While laying on my back, staring into the sky, I heard a noise coming from the other end of the roof. Thinking it was probably a possum messing around, I tilted my head from the sky to the direction of the sound. Something was slowly moving towards me in the dark, from the end of the roof. For a few moments, I stayed in place just, just, just trying to figure out what this was, trying to focus and make a solid identification of what animal was coming toward me. It wasn't until the creature got about halfway across the roof. My eyes could finally pick up on the features, disqualifying it from being any other animal native to my area. It looked like a small hairless person, crawling on its lanky hands and feet. Needless to say, I didn't stick around any longer. I hauled ass down the tree I'd come up on, back to the safety of my house. I don't know where it went after that. Thank you for sharing my story, and I hope somebody who's listening can possibly help me understand crawlers more. A couple of years ago, I had a weird encounter behind my house. There's a bunch of trees and manzanita bushes behind my house as well. Typical Northern California flora. My black lab was outside around 11.30 p.m. when she let out the most scared sounding bark I've ever heard. I went out to see what was happening and what she was barking at and started shining my flashlight around. I didn't initially see anything. The dog barked again and I caught sight of the humanoid creature as it shifted positions. It was maybe 15 feet away from me. The encounter lasted probably only two minutes. The creature was very geometric and generally thin. Its body was rectangular, maybe two feet across, long and vertically oriented. No tapering at either hip or shoulder. It was partially rounded on the edges, but I would hesitate to describe it as being cylindrical. Its arms seemed longer than its legs, though I admit it could have been crouching. Depending on whether it was crouching or not, I would say it was most likely between five and seven feet tall. At the end of each thin arm was a hand with six fingers, long and almost bony. Three of the fingers were really thick, while the other three were much thinner. It had a thin neck, thinner than its arms. Its head is the part that really freaked me out. It was as wide as its body and totally featureless. No face, no ears, nothing. There was nothing there to indicate that this thing had any eyes or mouth. The head was wider at the top than the bottom, still processing that rectangular cylindrical appearance as the body. Its overall appearance was unnaturally smooth. Its lines were too straight and the exterior was an incredible shiny black color. I shine my light on the creature more directly, and in spite of not appearing to have any eyes, it seemed to hone in on the flashlight beam, sort of tilting its head and partially pulling itself from behind the tall grass and fallen limb. It had no sound when it moved, even though I could see the grass moving and see a rather large branch snap as it shifted its weight. I couldn't tell if I thought it was a predator or prey or if it even thought about me at all. At this point, I decided I didn't want to stick around to find out what it was doing or why. I'm very scientifically minded. I seek to find a rational explanation for things before entertaining the notion that it could be some sort of supernatural phenomenon. I probably would have discounted the whole thing as my eyes playing tricks on me in the dark had my dog not been so visibly perturbed by the whole thing. I've never seen her shake like that. There are deer, mountain lions, coyote, all kind of animals around my house. She doesn't care about any of them, 
we've been face to face with mountain lions many times. Whatever this was left her scared to go outside for several days afterward. I wouldn't describe this encounter as negative. Terrifying, yes, but the unknown often is. I haven't seen the creature again. I still get goosebumps every time I think about it. Has anyone ever seen anything like this creature I've described? I'd love to get some opinions on my encounter. Most of my life, I've lived in the country. I've encountered quite a few scary things in my life, especially out in the backcountry farmlands. Some of these encounters were more supernatural in nature. This one, in particular, was the least of this world. But probably one of the scarier experiences, honestly. It happened over the course of a month. It started out as it always did. Late at night, around midnight, there are no street lamps, and all the neighbors are about 20 acres apart, so it's very dark and very quiet, and of course secluded. You can slightly hear the cars on Highway 75. Four miles away, it's so quiet out there. So, I'm on my porch enjoying a smoke, scrolling on my phone. I keep the porch lights off in the summertime because it attracts mosquitoes and June bugs. The light from the phone made it hard to see anything in front of me, but my dog was hanging out by my side the whole time. So not only did I know it was safe, but I also had something guarding me, and chance of some monster came out to try to get me. I say monster, because in over 20 years of living in the neighborhood, no person or wild animal ever bothered anyone. You'd maybe hear coyotes howl between 11 and 1 a.m., but they don't dare go near humans. Any fear I would ever have out there was if monsters were real, and I've yet to see one so I wasn't too concerned about my surroundings. As I'm engrossed in my phone, I hear to the right of me rustling in the grass. In fact, it sounded as if something large was out there, maybe about my dog's size. It sounded like something was dragging itself slowly on its belly right for me. My first thought was, man, my little doggo is being silly. She must want my attention, and I chuckled to myself. Not that she was little, that was more of a term of endearment. She was a tri-colored pit bull. I tried to look up from my phone to see her in action, but my eyes, as mentioned before, had trouble adjusting to the dark. And that second, from the left of me, mind you, that I had thought my dog was to the right, to the left of me was my pit bull, running as fast as she could, from the backyard out from the side fence, barking and growling louder than I ever heard before. Just as my eyes adjusted, I caught a glimpse of something gray and sleek and fast and just about the same size as my dog, but much, much skinnier and much quicker, almost like it was emaciated. Something went tearing off into the night, my dog on its heels. She chased her to the pond on the seven acre property. She came back partially wet, her fur still sticking straight up, still looking towards the pond to listen for a growl. She's not the type to chase animals. She was the type to play and be sweet. She grew up with kittens and never barked at door knocks or anything like that. After that, I never sat out front at night to smoke at that house. I have now always stayed on the enclosed back porch. A month later, I'm sitting on that porch, listening to coyotes yip and howl. I had decided it must have been a stray coyote though. It looked like it just had mange or something. I was trying to rationalize it. So I'm on that porch, and suddenly the coyotes abruptly stop. I then heard this terrible noise. It sounded like something dying. Like a house cat, but much more guttural. Before I could move, I heard the most terrible scratching sound I've ever heard on the outer wood walls. It was more like a grinding. I ran inside and cowered in my room. The next day, I went out to look at the wall, and sure enough, there were what appeared to be 20 clawed scratches on the wall, some very deep, like they were almost cut with a knife. This happened in Glenpool, Oklahoma. We don't have mountain lions, we don't have bears, well not typically, especially where there aren't any wooded areas like this small town. But I tell you, from what I've seen, these scratches kind of look like how large cats and bears are. There are no woods, no trees, it's all open plains. Where would it live for a month? Does it have a secret burrow by the pond? 
Now, when I stay at my parents, I never go outside at night unless someone is with me and all the lights are on. I noticed even the cats won't go outside at night. Even the stray cats get under the house and only come out during the day, which is odd for a nocturnal animal. I don't know what it was that was stalking me last summer, but I don't think it was the first time, or, or at least part of me feels like whatever it was is still lurking around on the darkest nights. When I was four or five years old, I lived in the mountains, renting a house with just me and my mom. I really liked it up there and still visit it with my dad as he owns it now. I'll tell a story as it all happened in the same week. The first thing that happened was I was going to play with Legos. I think when we moved the box there was a baby rattlesnake behind it. We killed it with a shovel, but it almost bit my mom. The next thing that happened was I was playing outside in the dirt and I saw two baby bears in my yard. They didn't do anything except stare at me. I ran inside scared and when we all went outside they were gone. The last thing lasted three days the first time it happened. I was playing on my mom's old computer when I heard this banging sound. So I went to the kitchen and saw this quote unquote bear. It was like mutilated and foaming out of the mouth. My mom called the police and when they arrived the bear ran off. The second day it was circling our house and tried to get on the roof but failed and ran off. The third night was the worst. I was sleeping in my mom's room because I was scared of this bear thing and then we heard scratching on the back door. My mom made me stay in the room, so I did. When she went to the door it was clawing and banging on the window, so my mom called the police again. This time they saw it and chased it off into the woods. My mom described it to me. She said it was bloody and had this evil energy coming off of it. It was foaming at the mouth, like it had rabies or something, but it didn't act like it had rabies. We did hear that they found this creature and killed it later on. See, what's weird about it is, it was like skinny and humanoid-like, almost looking like a bear with thick, shaggy fur. But it had no weight to it. It's weird. It's almost like there was a shell. I don't know. Maybe this isn't a cryptid. Maybe it is. I don't know. I know it's not the scariest story you've ever read, but I think it still qualifies. Okay, I'm 21 years old, but I have experienced this horrific moment when I was just five. But I somehow remember this very vividly. I was living in Kentucky at the time, and my dad was in the army, so my mom and brother and I were living at the army base. The houses were nice, but they definitely had to be haunted for how long they've been there. I haven't had any paranormal experiences there. This was the only thing I guess you could call paranormal. I was in the living room by myself. I was watching cartoons as any five-year-old would. My kitchen at the time was right by the living room. So as I'm sitting there, I have this weird feeling and I feel something staring at me. I instantly froze and did not make any sudden movements. I see at the corner of my eye this big black figure moving. I could tell it was moving slowly, almost as if it was dragging its feet if it had any. I could tell it was black and very tall, but it looked as if it was almost wearing a black coat or something was wrapped around it. I still don't know to this day what the exact features were or what this thing was. Obviously, it wasn't my mom because she's short and definitely not my three-year-old brother at the time either. It was tall and lanky and looked like it had claws. It was walking from the kitchen to the hallway back towards our rooms. I was trying to ignore the presence of this thing. I just wanted it to go away. So I closed my eyes and sat very still. After just a few minutes, I opened my eyes and looked over there and it was gone. I definitely had goosebumps and was scared for my life. I ran back to my mom's room and I was crying because I was just so scared. She asked me what happened and I didn't tell her what I saw. I was just crying. Recently I had asked my mom if she remembered that and she told me she did and she mentioned how she saw red eyes late at night by her TV one time when she was trying to sleep. This wasn't the only time I've ever had paranormal encounters and not the scariest but this was my first. 
It may sound crazy, but I do wish now that I looked at this thing just to see what would have happened and where it went. I used to have these little hunches that this thing lived in our basement. So this story begins around roughly 2016. I had recently graduated high school and was working a full-time second shift job. Right around this same time, I had an obsession with strange haunted places and things. I used to go to a haunted cemetery, an abandoned building, with quite a few scares on my record, but nothing too terrifying. That is, until about three months after when I had one of the weirdest dreams of my entire life. To explain it as clear as I can, it was when I actually dreamt myself waking up in my bedroom. I noticed the motion lights in my garage outside were on, so I got out of bed and walked over to the window. What I saw outside standing in my driveway was a single, tall figure. His head was about even with where the light is mounted on the garage, so at least 8 feet tall. I noticed he was wearing a grim reaper-like robe, but the face... Well, the face was like a deer skull. It looked like the skull of maybe a, a cross of a deer and a horse. It's hard to say. It was definitely some sort of deer skull, though. He was just standing there, staring at me, motionless. He stood stiller than the trees next to him and stared into my soul. Anyway, at this point, I actually woke up in real life, and to my horror, the motion light was on, but when I went to check, there was no one or nothing outside. This was freaky and quite frankly had me freaked out for a good week or so, and then I eventually forgot about it. Fast forward to 2019. I'm in college now and I'm roughly six hours away from home. Now recently I've been seeing this thing with my own eyes while I'm awake. I see it out my window standing in the neighboring field sometimes. Sometimes when I'm doing homework, I'll look over and I'll see it. I've been seeing it walk past my door as well. Inside my building, multiple times. I just try to ignore him, or it, or whatever it is. It just seems like it's slowly getting closer and closer to me, and I'm not sure why. I notice that it seems to appear when I'm in times of really high stress. The first time I saw him was probably the roughest patch of my life prior to this point. I'm honestly not even sure what this thing is or what it means, but believe me when I say this is scary looking, it's intimidating, and it looks evil. This is coming from somebody who doesn't get spooked easily at all. If anybody knows what this could be, please let me know. I've done some research and I come up with like skimwalkers and stuff like that, but I really don't think this is the same thing. My friends and I thought going for a hike would be a fun activity, since all we do is play video games. We live in a city that I cannot say for private reasons. We all took the same car. There were four of us, Tara, Robert, Olivia, and me. Emily, the driver, took four hours, and once we got there, the sun was starting to set. There was traffic, so it had taken much longer than it should have. Although it was getting darker, we did not want to waste this trip. I walked out of the car. All of my friends had gotten out on the other side with the trail on it, but I, being my dumb self, got out on the side with all the overgrown grass. As I got out, I looked at my feet, then I looked up. Oh my god, I screamed, and everybody came around the car to look. Oh holy shit, Robert said while he stared at all the blood and body parts of an animal scattered. The smell hit me like a wave. My eyes started to water, and I went back into the car. I looked out the window at everybody else. They all started to walk up the trail, so I ran up to catch up with them. We have to make up as much time as we can. It's getting dark, and we don't have time to stare at what happens when animals die, Robert told me. I glanced around. Something wasn't right. I looked to my left and stopped dead in my tracks. Olivia had seemed to notice, too, because she screamed. 
Olivia had grabbed my hand, and we both ran to the other side of the woods. As we ran and left the group, I tried to make out what I saw. The antlers, long arms, skin so tight and pale you could see bones, and the black eyes that seemed to suck in all light. This wasn't a wolf. It was a wendigo. Oliver and I kept on running until it was so dark we could not see anymore. I lay down on the fallen leaves next to the big rock. At this point, I did not care about any bugs. I slowly drifted off into a dead sleep. Soon after I woke up, screams were all that I could hear. Then it all stopped. A voice came out from the darkness. Help! A voice with no energy in it called out. I got up and ran with Olivia until we found our car again. I was bleeding from all the pricker bushes. I waited with Olivia in the car until any others could come. Hours had passed, and through those hours, I stared at the woods, seeing yellow eyes occasionally showing through the car lights. Once the sun had started to rise, Tara came through the woods in tears. I found Robert. He was in the clearing next to the rock, dead. I realized he was who called out for help. Years later, I have now just started to tell people about what had happened. Never leave your friends alone in the woods at night. I am a stoner, plain and simple. Well, one time I bought around two to three grams and wanted to smoke. My parents are very strict about weed so I couldn't just roll up and smoke at my house. So, like an idiot, I thought it would be a good idea to go for a long blunt walk in the woods. I've done it a thousand times before and knew exactly what trail I was going to take and everything, since I basically lived in these woods as a kid. That said it was like 4.30 in the afternoon in winter, so it gets dark pretty early. I don't care enough as though I had my phone and a lighter. I also carry my pocket knife everywhere I go just to be safe. As I was walking through the woods I had barely lit my blunt when all of a sudden I heard a noise. I shine my light over to see what seems to be a deer. So I just shrug it off and continue my walk. Ten minutes in and I'm starting to feel pretty high and decide it's too cold to walk anymore because I don't want to ruin my high with the cold. I start my walk back to my house when I see the same deer but this time I got a good look at it. It was tall, maybe 6'5", maybe taller. I'm 17 and 5'8", so I'm not small, but I'm not the biggest. I immediately, like, freak out, realizing how tall this thing was. I look at its body, and notice it looks like it's got shot by something. It was bleeding profusely, but it was past hunting hours, and I was less than 200 feet from my like local apartment so I'm pretty sure I would have heard a gunshot but I never heard one after seeing the blood I see its horrific face the way this thing looked at me instantly sobered me up it had this cold stare that not only bore into my soul but cut me and left me in terror its jaw was half hanging off and bloody its skull was showing the worst part however was the eyes. The cold, dead black eyes. After standing there just kind of looking at this thing, after a solid minute or two, it just starts walking towards me, one step at a time. Its movements were jagged and jerky, kind of like a broken toy that's supposed to be able to walk. I come to my senses after seeing it walk and realize it's on the trail leading back to my house. As I said though, I basically grew up in these woods. I knew every path and where every path took you. So I turn around and make a break for it. As I do, I hear this ear-piercing scream, unlike anything I've ever heard before. I kept running and running until I made it home. The entire time it sounded like it was right behind me. I make it to my house and ran straight from my room and cried. I had never seen anything like this, this thing. I got to school the next morning and asked my friends if they had heard the scream that night because we all lived pretty close to the woods. None of them had heard it, and they thought I just smoked some laced weed or something. I know I didn't know, and I just can't imagine something like this. 
I have gone back a few times but have never seen it again. I just want some insight on what this thing might be. I live in the middle of Pennsylvania, on the side of the Susquehanna River. I don't think it's Wendigos, because I don't think they're native there. But please help me and tell me what you think it might be. It'd be greatly appreciated. Before I tell you what happened that night, let me tell you who I am and when this happened. My name is Tyler and I'm 16. I'm a junior at a semi-private school. This event happened two years ago, almost three now, so bear with me on the details. The memories from that night are still a little foggy. But anyway, here I go. It was 2017, late October. I had just gotten home after a long day of school. I decided to hop on my PS4 and play some Call of Duty Black Ops 3 with some online friends. As hours passed, old and new friends came and went. I was home alone for the week because my mother and father went on a business trip to Georgia, as well as visiting family. It wasn't the first time that I had to be home alone for a long period of time. I usually went to bed around the time of 9.30, but since it was a Friday and I was home alone, I decided that I would stay up. 9.30 came, then 10, then 11, eventually midnight, and so forth and you get the point. My eyes felt heavy and were foggy because of how long I'd been playing video games, but the fact of me wearing contacts doesn't help either. I decided to check the time since I knew it was getting late. It was around 1.20 am. I was in the middle of a match, so I didn't want to get up and turn everything off. I decided that I was going to finish up the current match I was in and go to bed. As I was finishing up the match, a putridly bad and musty smell had hit my nostrils. To be honest, it tensed me up for quite a bit and I gagged on how bad it was. I knew I wasn't going to be able to sleep through it, so I played a couple of more matches and hoped for the smell to eventually go away, but that wasn't the case. Over time, minute by minute, it almost seemed that the scent was getting closer and stronger. I attempted to ignore it and continue playing my game. I have a noise-canceling headset, but I could swear that I heard footsteps from behind me but I remembered that I had 3D sound as well. So, being me, I ignored it. Then I heard tapping. I took off my headset to confirm that it was just the game. But then I heard it again. It was coming from the window behind me. It had shades over it, but with the outside light on, I saw a silhouette of something almost human-like. I stood in my room frozen in fear, looking at the silhouette, wondering if I was just delirious on sleep. But then its head ticked to the side like a bird, and it tapped on the window once again, in the same pattern. As adrenaline shot through my body, I decided, being the young, curious teen that I was, to open the shades. When I got closer, the stench got stronger and I could tell that now it was the smell of something decaying and dying. Could it be a dying animal that just so happened to stumble upon my window? I thought, but I remembered the tapping and how unison it was. I finally gained the courage to pull back the curtains, and I wish I hadn't. It had a human face, but where the eyes were supposed to be, there were just sockets. It had sharp teeth so jagged I swear it could tear through steel. Its face was decomposing and rotting. It looked like it had been dead for such a long time. I stood from where I opened the window shades in fear. I, I couldn't take my eyes off this thing. I don't know if it was looking at me or not because of its empty soulless eye sockets. Then it tilted its head with a sharp movement that startled me and I screamed. It got up with so much speed and went back into the woods. When it got up I saw its body and how contorted it was, 
and how awkward it moved. I couldn't sleep for the rest of the night, for weeks even. I haven't seen this thing since that day. I'm only sharing this now because in class a couple of weeks ago, we learned about Native American cryptids and the Skinwalker fit the description well. The only thing that's off is it usually takes the form of things that it's killed. My question is, who was the person it killed to take their form? I just hope that's the only time I ever see that thing, because who knows what it might do if we cross paths again. I still think about this often, and while it doesn't necessarily scare me, it always gives me this uneasy feeling of, what the heck was this thing? My grandfather and I were on our weekend golf cart ride. He lived in a country club community with a large golf course. It was probably two miles from the ocean canal as the crow flies. We were riding around the course and I was blissfully enjoying our time together when I had the something is watching me feeling wash over me. We were passing over a small bridge, literally maybe two feet off the ground, that went over a swampy area. Tall wheat grass surrounding us, maybe three to four feet high. I locked eyes with a creature that was squatted down in the brush, maybe seven feet from the trail. It was ruddy tan, with feathers and large, dead eyes. It was just staring at me, not blinking in the slightest. Its face had human-like features, but they were off. It had no lips. They were almost blurred. We were probably going only four miles per hour, so I looked at it for a reasonable amount of time. I couldn't distinguish any arms. It just looked like a mass of feathers, much like an owl that has its feathers ruffled. It was the size of a large man, squatted down. After going over the pass, I asked my grandfather to turn around. Not even three minutes had passed and the thing was gone from its original position. This was in eastern North Carolina. I haven't heard or seen any folklore on cryptid creatures that match that description in North Carolina. If anybody has any idea what this thing could be, please let me know. I would love to know. And thank you Swamp Dweller for sharing my story. Okay, so I've looked into many different cryptids in the New York area, and I have no clue what this thing was. In 2013, I lived in Jamestown, New York, with my grandfather, and there was this chained off dirt road at the end of the street where people would dump old furniture and things that couldn't fit in a normal garbage bin. I would always go back there after school and follow the dirt road down this muddy stream area that went to my knees, and every day I would wander in further and further until one day I ended up in a field area. I could see woods in the distance at the edge of the trees. There was something that looked like a huge cat, but it had antlers, and we were just staring at each other, until a car horn went off, and it ran off into the woods. As soon as it ran off, I felt like I had to get out of there as fast as I could. I have looked into the different types of big cats in Jamestown, and it wasn't a bobcat, that's for sure. The closest thing I could compare it to would be a mountain lion, and I've read rumors about mountain lion sightings in New York, but it wouldn't explain the antlers. There was also a report of mountain lions with horns in Idaho, but those ones were small and tooth-like. All I know is that the thing was not a deer, and every time I think about it I feel sick. If anybody has ever heard of any sort of creature or has any sort of idea what it could have been, please let me know because I'm out of ideas, and I'm pretty much out of places to research. I am not a believer in the supernatural or paranormal. At best, I'm an intrigued skeptic. I do not hold stock in spirits, magic, aliens, or the paranormal. I have nothing to gain from fabricating this story. Roughly about a year ago, my wife and I observed a strange creature on the side of the road, within 15 or 20 yards away from us. I slowed down 
and it stopped moving and watched us pass by. There was no mistaking what we saw. At the time, I had no frame of reference for what we had seen. It was bipedal, and taller than a man would be, maybe eight or almost nine feet tall. It was thin, but not necessarily skinny, if that makes sense. Muscular, slender, but not gaunt. It was white, almost reflective white, and its knee joints were inverted like the forelegs of a horse. Its arms hung at its sides like a humanoid, and it had hands. But its head was deer-like, with a snout and antlers. It was very close. There is no chance we were mistaken or confused. This occurred in central Illinois. I intend to find physical proof of this creature. Any information, advice, help, or interested contacts would be much appreciated. In the meantime, I have been spending time in the area, talking to locals and walking the woods. A lot of the locals will admit to seeing albino deer, but the stories always left them feeling nervous or uneasy if not downright afraid. These are people who would not be afraid of any kind of deer. It leads me to believe there is a kind of conscious disconnect from what they know they actually saw. I don't expect to find the thing, but who knows. I'm mainly looking for an odd or inconsistent animal behavior or bizarre markings and the like. Again, any advice is welcome. I don't know what I saw, but I'm absolutely terrified. I'm hoping one of your viewers could maybe tell me what I had encountered. I was invited to a friend's house to play on a Friday night after school had let out. My friend who I'll call Sebastian ordered pizza for us. We spent most of the night watching TV and playing on his PlayStation. We stayed up late until 1am, and that's when things started to go south. Just as we were about to start playing another new game, I distinctly heard footsteps outside of his house. It was in the middle of fall so all the crunchy leaves were on the ground, making it obvious to tell when someone or something was walking around outside. I wasn't too distracted by it since my friend lived in a busy area and it wasn't too uncommon for people to be out this late. But the sounds of footsteps got closer to the house. I'm quite paranoid so I thought that someone was coming to break in. I told my friend and he didn't really acknowledge me since he was focused on the game. Then we heard a single knock at the door. I never seen my friend go completely calm to fully alert in a split second like that. Now, I was terrified and I could tell my friend was too. My friend told me to be quiet as he slowly crawled towards the window to see what was outside. I motioned for him not to, but he didn't listen. He slowly peered through the curtains. I could see in his facial expression that he had seen something terrifying. He closed the curtain and crawled back to me. He had the I've seen a ghost look on his face. I decided to go look for myself as I was curious. As I started to get up, my friend grabbed my arm and held me back. Then whatever was out there let out an eerie clicking sound. It sounded like a predator. My friend let go of my arm and I took this chance to see what was outside. I peered through the curtains and what I saw chilled me to the bone. There was this man standing in the driveway. He was just standing there making this clicking sound. It was creepy. I thought it was just some guy playing a prank on us. I'd have tried to be tough and so I yelled out to the guy, Hey, what the hell do you think you're doing? Then the man turned to look right at me through the window. I couldn't make out any facial features except for its eyes. They were glowing. They had this distinct shine to them. Then the man turned around and ran toward the back of the house. Whatever this thing was, it was trying to break in through the back door. Luckily it was locked, but I wasn't going to take any chances. My friend and myself grabbed a knife. After a few attempts of trying to break in, this thing gave up. I could see through the window on the door that the thing ran in all fours and jumped over the neighbor's fence. This is the scariest thing I have ever experienced, and I am not sure what I and my friend saw that night. 
I hope somebody listening maybe can tell us. I was driving my cousin to his place of work, and we got there early. It was still dark, and so we decided to wait for him next door, which is a gym and has plenty of light and cameras. As we were driving next door, there is a forest behind the building, and there is a small opening between the buildings that lead into the woods. As we were going across, we saw a deer and told my cousin, Hey, look, a deer. We both saw it, but almost immediately started to feel very weird. The more we looked at it, the more we felt something was just not right. My cousin then said, Why don't his eyes reflect your lights? I had my lights right on him and he was right. I didn't see any reflection. The uneasy feeling grew more and more until I realized it was fear. I thought to myself, Why the heck am I afraid? Then I turned to my cousin and told him, Hey, I don't think that's a deer, dude. We looked back at it and then it started to move. Its feet moved like it was noodles. All four of them like if you had long string and you moved it back and forth really fast. That's what we saw. I started to say out loud, Whoa, whoa. I pulled out my revolver from my holster and as if this thing knew it, like it all of a sudden sprinted back into the forest. Me and my cousin kind of nervously laughed off what had just happened, but we still talk about it, and we have made sure not to leave the house anymore without our guns. We both have our licenses to carry and both have our licenses to kill big game, but to my question, is it illegal for me to go into the forest and hunt this thing down and kill them and post my findings on social media? I know this sounds like horse hockey, of the highest order, but the thing is, if these things are out there, then I want people to know that they are there and I want them to be aware that these things are in this world. Again, I cannot express how much of a serious question I am trying to make here. Thank you for your time. Let me start off with a little bit of background information. I live in a very forested area surrounded by a bunch of mountains. There's a stream across the road, but we live a ways away from it. Our house sits more at the top of a mountain, surrounded by towering trees. Our neighbors are somewhat close, but we can barely see each other's houses. We have three dogs, one has passed away since then, and three cats. Our neighbor also has dogs and cats, so there definitely isn't a shortage of pets anywhere. Anyways, that's what you need to know. It was in the middle of the week sometime in late August or early September. It was still hot since it was the end of summer, so my mom and I slept with our windows open. We never worried about the windows being open because, statistically speaking, we were a lot safer in the forest than in the city. Everything was the same as usual until 4am came around. We were woken by a ear-splitting guttural scream. We ran into the living room to check on each other, and we were all okay. The screaming continued and it was at the same pacing. There would be a pause for about 2-3 to three seconds and then a scream. The screaming lasted for all of about 5 minutes and then stopped abruptly. My mom and I closed all the windows and drew the blinds. None of our pets seemed to care what the screams were doing echoing through the house. Which I thought was very strange and out of character for them. A leaf could fall and they would lose their minds. So why the sudden silence? Because the screaming stopped, my mom decided to call the sheriff rather than the entire police force. The officer kept saying that it was probably nothing, but would drive by anyways. We stayed up waiting for the sheriff to drive by, and eventually he did. He didn't investigate much at all though. He did exactly what he said he would do, which was a drive-by. My mom and I struggled to sleep that night, but we did. The next day we did some investigating and called all of our neighbors to make sure they were okay. But when we called, all of them said they didn't hear a thing that night. We were in disbelief that no one heard it because it was so loud. So we started thinking that there must have been a domestic violence cover up or maybe someone had a really weird kink. Luckily the final neighbor we called gave us a somewhat helpful answer. He told us that he didn't hear it himself 
but he had heard sounds like that in the forest before. Now, it could be a mountain lion screaming, but when we looked it up, it didn't sound like that. It's not the same scream at all. But we also found some tracks. After more research and listening to Swamp Dweller videos, I think it may be on the spectrum of a skimwalker or a wendigo. What do you guys think? Am I just overthinking this? Thanks for listening to these creepy and downright unexplainable cryptid encounter stories sent in by viewers just like you. If you have a story you would like to share in a future video, whether it's an encounter with a cryptid or something else, be sure to submit it at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. I would love to share your story with everyone here in the swamp. Stories like yours that help keep this channel going. If you're new to the swamp, why not join us? Hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to never miss a new video, as I upload them on all things natural and supernatural almost every single day. If you enjoyed these stories, please be sure to hit that like button as it helps me out a ton. The more likes this video gets, the more YouTube promotes it to fresh new eyes. If you're not aware, you can download your favorite Swamp Dweller scary stories on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, Stitcher Radio, and pretty much every other major podcast platform out there. Much love and appreciation to my friend, Celestial Noor, and fellow narrator, Night Stalker, who helped me read these stories today. So please be sure to check their channels out, the links will be in the description down below. They upload scary stories and I think you'll enjoy their stuff. Thank you guys as always for supporting the swamp. It's amazing to see how many of you come video after video. We've made it to the end once again and I'm sure you're looking for the code word. And today's code word is gonna be Haunted USB. I always love seeing how creative you guys get with these responses down below. Thank you for that. And I'll see you guys soon with another creepy video.